So, I just got done watching Batman Ninja. This is, of course, Warner Brothers' attempt at trying something new, bringing on various Japanese animators like Tokashi Yokozaki, uh, who is, of course, the character designer for the famous Afro Samurai series. While I will give Warner Brothers credit for doing something different, I really don't think this worked at all, and I honestly think this is a pretty bad film. I watched the English dub of this, and the dialogue was very weak in the dub. I have heard rumors about translation issues, but I will say at least the version I watched had some weak dialogue here and there. Not in the way Black Panther did, where it had some just like cheesy, corny lines. There was just no standout dialogue. It all felt like very generic, basic conversation. Nothing stood out to me. There are no lines that are specific to this movie that I'm always going to think about when I think about this movie. So the dialogue is nothing special. What about the premise? Well, this is the big thing I want to give this movie. It has an amazing premise. I love the concept of this film. While I do think the beginning of it was very rushed and Batman gets thrown into the past very quickly, I do like the concept of Batman being flung back into feudal era Japan and not having access to his gear. I mean, one of the biggest parts of Batman's character is that Bruce Wayne is a billionaire and that means he has a lot of cool toys. And it's really interesting to see him have his toys taken away from him. I also really like the animation in this. I think it is animating really well. I want to really give praise to the background art in this. I feel like there are some great, almost hand-drawn looking backgrounds in this that are just really beautiful to look at. They're almost pieces of art in and of itself, and I really do enjoy that about it. I could look at some of these backgrounds for hours. There were even a couple shots with Batman in them, looking out over like cliffs and things like that, that you could just look at for hours because they're beautiful pieces of animation. It is also nice to get to see the whole Bat family, something we don't always get to see in these movies. We even got the addition of Catwoman, who once again, we don't get a lot in these movies in a major role, and she was pretty prominent in this, which I enjoyed. I thought that visually the fight scenes looked really good, going back to my compliment of the animation. I think the fight scenes are very well choreographed. Visually, I love the final fight between Batman and the Joker, but overall, I think this movie is pretty bad. It can't seem to decide on whether or not it wants to be fun and goofy and silly, or if it wants to be serious. When looking at the movie's art and animation, you clearly get the vibe that this is a serious film. It doesn't look like a comedy. My first major problem has been use of technology in this movie. I have no issues with the concept of Batman having his Batmobile in the past. I can even buy all the stuff this universe in Batmobile can do. I can buy the Batmobile being smashed to pieces and the remains of it transforming into the Batwing and that when the Batwing get caught, Batman drops down on the Batbike and then have the Batbike turn into a Bat Armor. I can believe all that. That is stuff that has been done in Batman material for years. That I can buy completely. That is fine. The Batmobile is an incredibly advanced piece of 21st century technology. If I suspend my sense of disbelief, I can say, yeah, I believe you could do that with 21st century technology. Where I draw the line is where the castle Joker is in, grows a hand, like a mechanical hand, and starts trying to swipe at Batman and starts trying to crush him. The Characters from the future have guns, like futuristic guns, like submachine guns and beyond. They explained that the Batmobile was transported into the past because Alfred was in it nearby when the device went off. Okay, fine. But why are all the Gatling guns here? There were way too many villains in this. It almost felt like the plan for this was to make it a series of movies, and then somebody said, no, you can't do that, 
And then they just said, okay, we'll just deal with all the villains in one movie. Like, Poison Ivy is in this movie for maybe a good minute and a half, at most. At least she's in it for maybe 35 seconds. At the end of the movie, most of the villains basically get off screen to buy the Bat family. Mind you, this was all done so quickly, I honestly couldn't tell you who fought who because it was so rushed. There's also a sequence where all the villains reveal that their feudal Japan castles can transform into massive mecha. Yes, this Batman movie about feudal Japan had mecha in it, and it gets even better. All the individual villains to mecha come together to form a super robot, like out of a super robot show, like Gurren Lagann or something. It is the most out of place random, just nonsense I've ever seen in any film. It borderlines on being a parody. It is so unbelievably ridiculous. There's a part of me that thinks it was intentional, but the serious tone some of the other parts of the movie have contradict it so heavily that I don't think this was meant to be a joke. And if it was meant to be a parody and a joke, then it doesn't fit with the rest of this incredibly serious movie at all. Batman just doesn't feel like Batman in this. He makes this really big deal out of losing his tech. It's never been part of Batman's character that he's nothing without his tech. That's never been a thing. It feels like a really forced storyline, and it's just not interesting to watch because the most interesting thing about Batman is that he's a guy with no powers that is really, really smart. He is called the world's greatest detective for a reason. So the character arc they give him in this movie about learning that he doesn't need his tech seems like more something you would give a character like Iron Man than you would a character like Batman who had never relied solely on technology. Even without his technology, Batman is still one of the most skilled fighters on the planet. He actually makes stupid decisions in this movie. Batman does stupid thing than this. He is so lost and confused without his tech, he teamed up with the criminal Gorilla Grodd and assumes Gorilla Grodd won't betray them and gets screwed over when Gorilla Grodd does betray them. Mind you, the film leads you to believe this is the same Batman we are used to seeing. So his character art doesn't make any sense. And, as I mentioned earlier, all the technology and the robots and the mecha that shouldn't even exist, and their existence is never explained, kind of ruins the premise of the movie. Because of course, while Batman is still very dangerous and incredibly skilled and doesn't need his tech, it is still always very interesting to see it taken away from him. But that doesn't work when you still put him up against giant robots and stuff like that. There's also a lot of weird things that happen in this movie that aren't really explained. But they were going for a lot of like feudal Japan, ninjutsu. I get what they were going for, it just doesn't work. Because one of the biggest appeals of Batman, and he's just a guy that is really smart with a lot of money and a lot of toys. When you give him the backup and support of like ninjutsu magic powers and abilities, it just kind of takes away what makes Batman so interesting. A movie like this, where Batman doesn't have his tech, really gives them the opportunity to show us how Batman will get out of these situations without technology. How will he think his way out of these situations? Because that's what makes Batman so great. He's really, really smart. He's so smart, he can come up with a plan to kill the entire Justice League. But instead of doing that, they use ninja suit slash magic to get Batman out of situations, and the whole thing is just unbelievably contrived. It just doesn't really feel like Batman, and it's just not a fun movie. It has no spark. The dialogue and characterization are bland, and it just, as I said, doesn't feel like Batman. The character doesn't feel like Batman, and it's missing the things that make Batman great. As for the score, due to the incredibly high standards set by the DC Animated Universe and DC's animated films in general, I am going to have to give this movie a 4 out of 10. I just don't think this movie holds up compared to the rest of DC's animated production. This is the first time I've ever walked out of a DC animated film feeling really disappointed. I didn't have fun watching this, and I didn't think it was very good. I will stand by what I said, 4 out of 10. 
I know this wasn't as analytical as most of my other videos, but there's honestly nothing to analyze here. But, obviously, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. I normally do short Twitter reviews of things that I don't feel are worth covering in videos on Twitter. And, of course, subscribe for more videos. Have a great day, guys.